Hello, dear class seven students. Welcome back. So today we'll continue with the last part of this lesson seven. So the name of the lesson is Weather, Climate and Adaptations of Animals to Climate. So students, in our last class, we have studied difference between a weather and a climate, right? So weather, it is uh, the condition of atmosphere at a particular place, right? And climate, it is the average condition of a weather uh, taken for a long period of time, around 25 years, right? So there was a difference between the weather and the climate. And uh, I have shown you weather report. And now I'm sure you know who prepares the weather report, right? So it is prepared by the Meteorological Department of Government. And the meteorologists are those who studies about the weather, right? So students, and we studied about the polar regions and the animals that we fa fa find in the polar regions, such as the polar bear, penguins, and we studied about the migratory birds, right? One example, Siberian crane, right? We also discussed that India is a destination for those migratory bird because those birds during the winter they come here in india and the famous place in india for those migratory birds are bharatpur and sultanpur right and also the uh, in some places in northeastern place, uh, region so today we'll discuss about the tropical region so here we have a tropical rainforest so students, this type of regions, these type of regions are very, very hot. The minimum temperature in this tropical region will be more than minus 15 degrees Celsius, which is recorded during winter. Okay, so imagine the minimum temperature is more than 15 degrees Celsius. And the maximum temperature, and the maximum temperature is more than 40 degrees Celsius which is recorded during summer season. Now, in this tropical region, the length, the day and night are equal, okay? The night and day are of equal. Now, students, in this type of uh, tropical regions in India are found in Western Ghats and in Assam. And in the world, we find tropical regions in Southeast Asia, Central America, and Central Africa, okay? So students, there are many animals uh, found in this tropical region, and they have adapted to this weather condition. Just like the polar bears and the penguins, they have adapted to the, to the polar regions. The animals which are found in these places have also adapted to this region. So these are the animals which are found in the tropical regions, okay? So there are more animals, okay? There are more animals than these. So students will see some of the examples. So here, this is a very interesting animal. So the name of this animal is a red eye frog, okay? The red eye frog. Now, students, you can see the eye, right? So it is red in color. So the name of this animal is the red eye frog. Now, when you look at its feet, it has a sticky pad, okay? It has a sticky pad, which help, which help this uh, animal to climb, to climb in trees, okay? So this type of animals, they live in trees, okay? They live in trees. Now, students, not only this animal, okay, not only this animal, but the animals which are found in this tropical region, the animals which are found in the tropical region, they are lived, they have adapted, and they are adapted to live in trees, okay? So, uh, you, have, you have studied in your lower class, right? The animals that live on trees, they are called arboreal animals, right? So this red eye frog, they have these uh, special features, okay, which help them to climb in the trees. Now let's see another example. 
Now, students, these are monkeys. Okay, these are monkeys. Now, students, monkeys, they live in trees, right? Now, they have a long tail, right? They have a long tail. And that long tail helps help them, okay? Long tail help this monkey to grab the branches, okay? Now, students, they have, they, uh, they, see, they have these special features. They have their hands, their feet, you can see right so they can hold they can hold any branches and they can climb okay they can climb in trees and these monkeys they live in trees and they have adapted to this climatic condition okay so you can have a look at their features now students we have a beautiful bird here okay so the name of this bird is a token so they are very colorful and they have a very long beak, a colorful beak. You can see here, they have a very long colorful beak. Now, they, they feed, they like, okay, this type of animal, they like and they feed on fruits, okay? So this, with the help of this long beak, it helps them, it helps them to catch the fruit and all, okay? Now, besides fruits, they also feed on some reptiles and insects as well, okay? So, you can have a look at this bird. The name is Tolkien, and they have a very colorful, large, long beak, okay? And they like fruits, okay? Now, students, do you see this animal? Okay. So this animal is very famous for tropical region, okay? And the name of this animal is lion tailed macaque. Okay? Lion tailed macaque. So this type of animal are found in the tropical region. Okay? Now this animal has many features. Okay, there are many special things about this animal. They are also known as the beard app because you can see the beard, right? So they are also known as beard app. So let's see some features about this lion tail macaque. Okay, so students, uh, lion tail macaque, they mostly live on trees. Okay, see, they, they live on trees. Now, its most outstanding feature is the silver white mane okay the silver white white beard which surrounds the head from cheeks down to its chin yes you can see here till the chin right now students it is also called as a beard app as i have said earlier okay now it feed on fruits they like fruits leaves stem flowers Bats, okay, and beside that they also like insects, which it gets from the trees, okay. So once again, you can have a look at this lion-tailed macaque and its silver mane. See, okay. Okay, now there are many animals like lion, tiger as well, but now the animals that we'll discuss is elephant. Now, beside this uh, lion-tailed macaque, elephants are also very famous in the tropical region. Now, you can, you can all have a look at this elephant, okay? Now, they have a big ear, right? They have a big ear. Now, this ear uh, helps them. The ear is there. They have a very, very strong... This ear is very sensitive, okay? Very sensitive. It's, it's very big and it's very sensitive they can even hear the smallest sound okay so it protects them and then they have you can see the trunk long trunk right so it acts like a nose it also helps them to pull all the um, fruits branches okay and students so we can see from here that elephant they have adapted to this climatic condition that is tropical region, okay? So students, there are many examples 
for for the animals for the tropical region but we have seen some examples we have just seen uh, some examples which have which they have mentioned in your text okay so that comes to the end of this chapter dear students so students from this chapter we have learned about uh, weather difference between weather and climate and also students we have learned about uh, animals okay different animals how they have adapted to the different climatic condition okay such as you know, polar region and then we have discussed about the tropical regions and the animal found in these two regions okay so students that is all for this chapter okay now students we are going to discuss uh, we are going to discuss uh, about a new chapter that is lesson 11 okay lesson 11 so the name of the lesson is transportation in animals and plants so you can all turn to page 120 okay so you can all turn to page 120 so this is a very interesting lesson okay so lesson 11 page 120 so before this let me give you a brief introduction about this lesson okay so students every day we have, we see cars right we see buses or we see a garbage boy comes like uh, in your place right in your house they come every day uh, they come like in a week maybe once or twice and they collect the garbage they collect the trash and then they together collectively they dispose in the dumping site right and let's say uh, maybe your parents to go like for to go to market or for office office or market or maybe in any other place they go and then they go they maybe they take the help of the public transport or any means of transportation so they do their needs and then come back right so students see these are the different different means of transportation that we see here right so they all this transportation different means of trans transportation they help us right so likewise students even our body even our, in our body as we have studied in the uh, lower class we eat food right and then our food is digested where does it go right we drink water we inhale oxygen where does it go so the food which is digested right and absorbed in the small intestine and the oxygen which we inhale right and the water which we drink they are transported okay they are transported to different parts of the body okay and every single every single cell of our body needs all the energy okay needs all this energy so dear students dear students whatever all the food all the energy the oxygen okay this needs to be transported to all parts of the body clear so students um, the transport system the transport system in the human body okay the transport system in human body is done by the circulatory system okay circulatory system so this is the circulatory system it consists of three parts that is uh, blood blood vessels and heart okay so we will discuss we will discuss all these three one by one in details okay blood blood vessels and heart so like i have said the food that we eat which get digested or the air the oxygen that we inhale which is filled uh, which is filled in the lungs right 
and the water that we drink, it has to be transported to different parts of the body. And likewise, students, even, even a lot of waste, okay, a lot of waste are released, are released from our body. So there has to, it has to be released, okay, it has to be released. So students, everything needs to be transported, okay? So it is explained by the circulatory system. So now, first we will discuss about the blood, okay? First we'll discuss about the blood. Now students, what is blood? What do you understand by blood? Now, see, you can see your friend here. So we can see that he got like cut in his knees, right? So what happens whenever you get a cut? We can see blood, right? We can see blood. So blood is a red color fluid, right? Which flows through the blood vessels. Clear. Now, do you know the composition or the components of blood? So, students, there are fluid type as well as there are some solid in the compositions of blood. Okay? So, I'll show you. I'll show you the structure and diagram of blood. So students, this is how our blood looks like, okay? This is how our blood looks like. Now, our blood is composed of a fluid, okay? Fluid substance here, it is called plasma, okay? So the major composition is plasma, around 55%, okay? Around 55% is plasma, here you can see, okay? Now see, students, you can see here, right? These are the red blood cells. Red blood cells. And here, students, you can see platelets. Okay, platelets. And here, you can see the white blood cells. So these are the composition of blood. Okay? So let's, let's recall what we have learned. Blood, it is composed of plasma, it is composed of red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. Okay, st students? So, we'll discuss about their functions and we'll discuss about their uh, details, okay, in our next class. So, students, that is all for today. See you in the next class.